earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptations. Deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Thine in the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today we continue our premarital courses. We started this year by what we call experienced senses. And our talk today will be about how husband and people around should experience and have trained senses in recognizing when the woman or the wife go through a postpartum depression. This is a very crucial topic, even if you haven't been pregnant yet, even if you have been a mother for years. This topic is so essential because it covers so many things that we can apply in our marital relationship. Uh, it's our pleasure, Taban, that Dr. Alaa will be talking about that, and I ask the permission to broadcast, and we have that permission. Father, Dr. Alaa. The mic is on the screen, Dr. Alaa. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. How can we share the screen? If I do so, uh, I disable screen sharing. Would you, would you enable screen sharing, Abuna? Taban. أنا بس بدخل بعمل أدمش على الناس اللي عايزة تدخل وبعدين هقول إيه سكيورتي ألاو برسو برتوس بنتو شير سكرين فضل يا دكتور شير سكرين سي أمونا بين تو مايس I think we can see it now. Okay, do this one here from the beginning. Okay. So, this is very close to my heart. This is something that I live and we end with a bad, bad outcome probably once every couple of years. Each of the physicians, the obstetrics, will have to live a very difficult time with one of his patients going through, falling through the net. You do what you can do, but things don't go the way it should. So, most grateful that you are giving us an opportunity. If I start here, the what I'm hoping to get is to raise our empower young couples and start a roadmap how they can find the way to reduce the risk and if we are in there which some of us will be there no question mark no question mark then how do we help each other to get out of it i have no conflict of interest i am not getting any shares from that this is the one that will keep going around, and I hope that all of us will look down at himself when he is in any of these stages when he gets to, to it. So, having a baby, new mother, fussy baby, partner is going to work like he has to. All of a sudden, you start feeling like, I'm a terrible mom, I'm not doing good. You start feeling tired, exhausted, not feeling well. You find that you don't want to share things with people because you're supposed to be great and you're supposed to be happy. You're so supposed to be like, hey, it's great time. In spite of you not being able to open your eyes and having cracked nipples and unable to walk. But you're supposed to be celebrating. And all of a sudden you find that you're sad. You don't have the happiness in your heart. What's wrong with me? I'm a bad person. And from that point onward, we move downward. If we don't get together and pull on our resources and say, hey, we have the ability to sail through that one. So this is very, uh, this one, 
Jeremiah 1 5 when he said, Before I found you in the womb, I knew you. Just it makes me feel so precious, and all of us feel so precious. And I think every now and then, when I get a bad day, I go back to this one that, you know what? He knows me. He, he made me. He designed me. And even if I do changes to the, to the design that he made, again, he knows that I'm doing that. So this is, this is my go-to when I get stuck. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Let's go back to basics. So in Manitoba here, guys, if you are in trouble, please remember that your tax money has been spent to get resources. And please keep a note of this Postpartum Depression Association of Manitoba. If you ever get to question where are the resources, how can I get help for this or that, what should I do? All the resources have been pulled together to inform young couples and to support them on this website. And this association, if I show you, this is how it will look like when you open it. And if you scroll all the way to resources, you'll find 117 pages from BC, Postpartum Depression Management. It is nothing other than step by step to all the moms who feel like, you know what, I need help, you can go through it. So, this website, just keep it Postpartum Depression Association of Manitoba. Facts. We talk about 75% of the young couples, the mom will feel that, I'm not sure if I really like what I'm doing or not. I am exhausted, I don't like it, I'm crying, I'm sad, I feel like failure. And if that comes in small episodes and disappear and within the six weeks mark things go away, then you are absolutely one out of the 75% who will get postpartum blues. So postpartum blues are not a problem. This is a very common response from the exhausted body, the exhausted brain that went through the marathon of having a baby and coping with trees. The 15% that go into depression, these are the ones that will have these symptoms of being sad, feeling empty, feeling frustrated, feeling tired, feeling that this is an absolute failure and that will continue with them. And these 15% are the ones that will need all the help. Baby blues will go away. They are hormonal, they are mental exhaustion, they are physical exhaustion. Don't panic if for the first six weeks you are getting these feelings, you are okay provided you are not reaching the point of feeling you are out of control. Somehow moving forward and backward is not listening to me, so I'll try that one again. Yeah. And so, before we go further, how would we figure out if we as a couple are at more risk or less risk than others? And there is a long list that before having the baby, just while you're pregnant, you need to look into it and you need to get yourself a bit more prepared. The list is long, starting with previous episodes of mental health issues. Like one out of three of the youth have an anxiety and depression, so one out of three at higher risk. Bipolar disorders, obsessive compulsive disorders, or a family member that had postpartum depression. A 
if you are in a situation where you do not have support to your baby, you are at more risk. If you are in a relationship that you are working hard to make it work, you are at more risk. If you are counting cents and pennies because for God's sake, our budget is so tight, any hiccup in the spending will get us into trouble, you are at more risk. If you have health issues or your baby have health issues or your baby is just, just colicky and wants you to be stuck to her and stuck to him all the time, that will put you at more risk. A lot of us have thyroid issues, underactive thyroid and you don't know. And finally, the more you are higher up in the professional career, the more you are type A-like personality, the more that you refuse that things can be done halfway, if you're really a perfectionist, you need to figure a way to accept the change. Hormonal changes, girls who get to feel like I need to kill somebody the week before their period, we like to call them premenstrual disorders. These are the same girls that when they have the hormonal change of pregnancy and of delivery, they are struggling to make their body go okay and their brain function okay. We'll talk about unmet expectations. The higher you put the bar, the less chance that you reach that bar. And we do that to ourselves. Unplanned pregnancy, this is baby number four in the family, or baby number one, but you're still doing your exams. Complications of labor, we underestimate that. We like to say, hey, it's natural process. What is natural about it? Yes, we have six outstanding of the women. They come in, labor progress, they take short breaths, baby comes out. Yes, six outstanding go through that. That's great, it's a blessing. But we have two outstanding that will need interventions, whether it's forceps or vacuum or... And we have two outstanding that will need a cesarean section. All these are interventions that there is risk of issues and if you are not mentally prepared to go through it and who can be mentally prepared? You just go with the best you can do at the time. People who had a previous pregnancy loss, even if it was very early pregnancy loss, they are at far more risk. So. If we go through these three pages of risks, you'll find that all of us, or the vast majority of us, will either be type A personality or have some anxiety, have some depression, uh, putting the bar high up in our lives, and we'll work together how we avoid going that direction. So, perinatal mental illness is a huge spectrum. Postpartum depression is 10% of the women would feel an element of it during their pregnancy and 15% will suffer and continue to suffer during the postpartum period. Having a baby, we agree that you will, you will, you will be sad for some time, you will be tired, you are exhausted, you don't know if this is for you or not. But that is the postpartum blues. If these continue and go beyond the six weeks mark, and you start feeling like, I really do not enjoy any of that. You catch your baby and you look at your baby, and either you feel like, I'm not connected at all, or actually you get angry with your baby, you feel like, for God's sake, you've taken my life away, what are you doing to me? Feel like empty, and you feel like I'm trapped, and there is no way out. And some of the women will feel like, you know what, we should see an end to that, and they actually have suicidal thoughts. 
at Hills of Harley and Lady. This is what we will concentrate on today, and our plan is how to recognize who is at more risk. When we feel that we are going that route, how can we slam the brakes and how can we like shift gears to get out of going further south? And when we hit the crisis that we are really further south and we are in trouble and we are out of control, what should we do and how can we get help? And I just need to clarify that no one is immune. No matter how religious you are, no matter how much faith you have, postpartum depression does not say that you don't, have, you don't trust God and does, you don't really believe in God. Postpartum depression does not say that you are an incompetent person. It does not say that you are selfish. It does not say that you are a failure. It says that you are a normal human being that is going through struggles that is thrown on you and you deal with it. So postpartum depression is our big story, but we need to go back and acknowledge that a lot of the women will have an anxiety during the postpartum period. And they have this terrible feeling of something terrible is going to happen. I'm staying, sitting here, feeling my heart is heavy, something bad is going to happen. And that can escalate to start feeling that they are breathing fast, their heart is pounding, they are dizzy, they are sweating, they are shaky, and a lot of the time this ends with a panic attack where the husband thinks, my girl is really, really in trouble, and we end in the emergency room for a visit where they check the vitals, they check everything and say, hey, I think this is just your brain is going too fast. So, bipolar mood disorders can be very obvious during postpartum. You find people going through two lines. Super happy, can't stop talking, can't stop running around. She would lose her sleep for two, three days. She can't sleep, she can't stop doing things. Then she crash, and she is mega sad, mega exhausted, and she didn't sleep for three days because of the manic part. When she goes into the depressive part, she's at far more risk of hitting the red light of psychosis, where she starts seeing things, hearing things. So, all the postpartum depression, the anxiety, the bipolar, all these will be helped with the same strategies that we'll talk about in the a bit later on. Postpartum psychosis where we said we hit the red line, thanks God it doesn't happen often. Like we have 10,000 deliveries in Manitoba, we will see between 10 to 20 postpartum psychosis. And these people, they do need to be admitted to the hospital. They can harm themselves and they can harm others. It's, they are having hallucinations, they have intrusions, they think that somebody is there to steal their baby and, and swap the babies, they are hearing voices, and the voices tell them what to do, and if they follow, they might kill their baby or kill somebody or kill themselves thinking, we are protecting that baby from whatever. So, yes, it is only one to two in a thousand, but when it hits us, it is serious. And if somebody starts feeling, I am not there, we'll talk about what do we do when we get the crisis. Okay, I'm going to take this one out, do it back. PTSD is not a fake term. It is not for, hey, because we are spoiled society and we want to make everybody sick, we call post-traumatic stress disorder. That is unfair. Women who go through labor, especially if labor is complicated, especially if they tried the epidural, the epidural did not work, especially if they had a inappropriate 
provider, whether it is a physician or a nurse, that was not connecting with them, they go home feeling humiliated, feeling like violated, and they do not want to think of this again. It has been a terrible time for them. And that can come back as flashbacks, that can come back as palpitations whenever somebody talk about pregnancy. It can come back in every shape or form whenever the memory get to be brought forward. So if somebody starts talking about when I when I when I think of labor, I feel terrible. I when I think of my my delivery, I get palpitations, I'm sweaty. Don't judge her. She went through something that should not she should not go through. But unfortunately, it's part of the game. So before I go through the strategies, I want to clarify a few myths that are around in our society. And one of them, becoming a mother means you'll, you'll be happy and you'll be amazingly joyful 24-7. Hallelujah. Great. Motherhood, number one, you're working 24-7. You have not had training. You don't have a manual. But you have 120 manuals because every friend of yours is willing to tell you what you should be doing. Every family member has his own way, which is good for them, but they want you to implement it. So you are going there with no training. You're going there with hardly any knowledge. Your baby is a different baby. A human being is different. And you have to listen to everyone around you who is giving you advice and makes you feel like I am on my own while I'm surrounded by 10 people. You feel that no one is feeling your pain. And as everyone goes home and you stay up all night trying to feed the baby that's colicky and crying and things don't work, then you crash at 5 o'clock in the morning to get 2 hours of sleep. Then 7 o'clock in the morning, you're supposed to be awake and putting a smiley face on your face. Three, four days down the line, you're sleep deprived, you're exhausted, you are mentally incapable of doing what you usually do because you had two hours of sleep for three, four days in a row. And we wonder why we are, why I'm not happy. I'll be happy later, but guys, let me just get my wounds healed. Let me get myself into a routine. Let me get my head on top of this water. In one of my uh, previous amazing um, senior colleagues, she had four kids, and she used to call it BC and AC, you know, before Christ and after Christ. She used to say her life before children and after children, and honestly, I can relate to that when I see patients. Second myth, they tell you bonding with your child is going to happen like this. No, it can take a long time. You can be angry with your child, and actually, actually your child you might feel that he's angry with you sometimes. And you are both trying to see, am I uh, training you, or are you training me, or are we working together to love one another all the time and eventually find common ground but there is this fight oh in the old days when they said oh leave the baby to cry forever don't let the baby he, listen dictate things on you then they come back later and say no 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 when you leave baby crying forever he has lost a lot of the attachment and actually he needed you at that point so guys make up your mind you want me to catch you hold my baby or leave my, my baby. You'll find that one of your mother-in-law is saying this and the other is saying opposite because both of them were told different things at different times. Breastfeeding. It is the most natural thing. I love when people throw this on women. Yeah, the most natural thing, but if you're not having if you're not having 
enough milk supply and your breast did not go beyond the colostrum and your baby is colicky and crying, you're going to keep the baby in your breast until your breast starts to crack, physically cracks like cracks. And if anybody has a little crack in his finger, he can't move it. If you have a crack on your nipple, you're in pain because baby, when they suck, they really suck. They grab the breast and they suck. So don't underestimate the pain a woman is going through when she gets cracked nipples because she's not, she's not having enough milk supply or she has inverted nipples and nipples hiding inside and the is trying to drag them out. So just because I'm not going to fix things, but for the low milk supply, don't suffer in silence. Pick up the phone, talk to your doctor. Your pharmacist might throw some domperidone and some good stuff on you. For inverted nipples, please go and spend $15 for the nipple shield. Don't shy away from that. Ask for help to get all-purpose nipple ointment. So if you have troubles with the breastfeeding, it is not you who is failing. It is you asking for your help, for help, and we are there for you. Mom thinks, oh, we are young and strong. We can figure whatever position to get the breast into the baby of my, of my into the mouth of my baby. And she is sitting in her bed, twisted for two and a half hours. No wonder she can't, she can't walk the day after. She looks like a 70 years old woman when she's trying to get out of her bed. And she looks at herself and thinks, my God, I can't walk. I can't stand straight. My hair looks ugly. I did not brush my teeth today. What's wrong with me? Then all of a sudden, the stitches that somebody left down there make her unable to sit. And you're expected to smile and look good. You're expected to look like your friends on Facebook. And I'm going to go and talk to you about Facebook and about Instagram and about the crazy, unfair expectations that women who have, who are deep in trouble, they fake it. They put it on Facebook and make everybody else feel like, hey, we are failures. So we'll talk about it in a minute. If you reach the point, you feel like, you know what? The thoughts are racing in my mind. I don't know if I really want to throw this baby off the crib into the floor. If I don't, if I don't know if I really want to kill myself. Or if you are in the family as a member and you feel that your beloved one is losing control completely, please make arrangements, take babies out. So don't leave the kids in the house while you are running into that. If you hit the wall, you are out of control, your wife is having a rage or you are having a rage, you feel like killing yourself or killing somebody, please ask for help. Call someone you trust to come and take the kids or watch the kids. Do you have in Manitoba buckets of the money that you spent? as taxes, going to the clinic crisis line, going to Manitoba suicide prevention support line, and going to the WRHE mobile crisis services. All these are a flick of your finger on your phone. If you put crisis line, mental health crisis line, they will all come. And these are 24-hour services and they are available and we have tons of our money going to them. If the above is not working, your kids are safe, get, take your girl and go to Banatine Avenue to the WHA Crisis Response Center. This is 24-7. You have somebody from psychiatry and psychologist there. If you cannot make it there, just stop and, at the nearest emergency room. How can we reduce the chance of reaching, hitting the wall and needing help like this? Think of it like when you are in an aeroplane and they tell you if the pressure drop, put your mask on before you put it on your child or somebody else. Help yourself first before you help somebody else. So we need to figure out how we help ourselves. Abuna, my screen is saying 8 minutes and 30 seconds. Is that what's left from the meeting? That's what's left from the Zoom free account. As soon as it is done, we will log back again. To continue. Okay, because I would like people to get questions. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> if we 
in, in eight minutes, we will have to restart to the same exact meeting. Look, hi. So I'm going back here. Use the metaphor of the airplane when they say, if the pressure drop, put the mask on yourself. If you if you can't fix yourself, you can't fix anyone else. So let's work on how go, how do we keep ourselves in shape to fix ourselves. Number one, sleep and sleep and sleep. And the when you sleep, you are going to be actually able to make fun of yourself. You are going to make fun of your funny hair. You are going to make fun of your dangling boobs. You are going to be making fun of. Oh my God! Look at this. That's great. You will be able, you and your partner, to come to the fact that this chaos is not going to last forever. And here I said this for a few months, but honestly, it feels like for the first 18 years, sometimes 25 or 32 years, I'm not sure. But anyhow, it's, you, you, you learn as you go. But this chaos does not last forever. We like to think so. So sleep is your lifeline. And if you want to do a great favor to your partner, take the baby, let her crash into her bed, wake up and shower and fix her hair. You are actually saving your family by doing so. Go for, I like that we have psychologists I have, I think, it, it, I hope that Myrna is, is connected, I hope that Nardine is, it, is there because I like when they talk about the anxiety and protocols and you have the, all these the amazing anti-anxiety and relaxation techniques. Actually, they work, and actually our patients know about them way more than us. So maybe physicians have not had time to practice the relaxation techniques as much as our patients. Most of the patients, they have an app on their phone for relaxing, and so that's what they say. So, But sleep, you can't relax if you are short to sleep. The expectations that you have should be realistic. Please do not believe everything, every, every thing you see on Facebook or Instagram about the mom who is three days after, her hair is flowing in the air and she looks like a model and she's super happy and glamorous. The same mom, she can't walk because she has an episiotomy. She's having unfriendly bleeding that she is not dealing with. She's short to bleed. Of, of sleep, do not believe everything other people put on the internet. Make your expectations realistic. In time for yourself, we fail big time as Egyptian society and community to actually give ourselves the, the, the right to have time for ourselves. We feel guilty because we have to do something for others. You know what? Just like 20 minutes of your time yourself, like going for your own walk, you're listening to music that you like, reading verses that you loved from the Bible when you were younger, listening to um, your preferred hymns from Sunday school when you were young. Do something that you really like. Something that's for you for 15, 20 minutes. And trust me, you will never for, you will never regret that 20 minutes that you get. Stop comparing. Why? It's my phone. I don't have silence. No, my, my daughter won't take my phone. It's mine. Put it on silent. It's my phone. It's, sorry, guys. Uh, that's Tia trying to interfere and take my phone away. Anyhow, um, we'll go back. So, comparing... Uh, Abuna, don't fire me, Abuna, please. <laughs> yeah, um, comparing is poisonous. Is It ruins everything you have. Once you start looking at what others have, you lose the ability to look at what you have and you lose the joy of it. And I know I don't want to be fired, but honestly, I was listening. If you look at the screen, you find this guy who is one of the Egyptian, new Egyptian uh, song uh, singers. Her name, his name is Rami Kamal. And after your permission, Abuna, I promise, I promise, I'm not going to do anything that's not. Really Let me just make sure that this is. Then here we go. 
I'm going to go to this point here. Listen to that guy. Even this guy, in his song, what he's saying, he's saying, stop looking at what others have, because that ruins your own life. You lose what you have. So I would say 1,000%, please do not compare yourself to others. You are great the way you are. Your strength is different from the strength that your friend has. And do not do that to yourself. Support and we are more privileged than others having bigger network of support if we use it. We belong to a massive church. We have church leaders that we can reach to. We have the servants that we can reach to. We have friends from services. So you are connected. And people who have religious beliefs, they have more of a chance to use the resources to put their fears down and put the heavy weight on the shoulder of the Lord they believe in. And this is amazing asset that we have, but it is not the only asset that you have. Support from family and friends and support from support groups. Family and friends, they might be shying away from coming to ask you if you need help. So we'll talk about what we should be doing. And support groups, you have so many support groups for new moms. They just get together. They just share, even buy and sell, even a giving rest bite. If somebody walks into your place to take care of your kids for two hours for you to go out. If we have less than one minute, Abuna. Should uh, we let, let, wait until it cuts off or what we yeah, should I be think, doing? I think let's restart. So guys, we're going to restart now. Please log back again because still we have uh, the rest of the talk and we have your contribution time. Let's restart. Same exact uh, information. I'm just letting people in. Abuna may kindly allow sharing screens. Yes, just a second. Share screen. I think now you can share it with it. Father. See Abuna. I'll go start from here for that. We were talking about religious support, friends and family, support from groups. Um, as much as we have a wealth of having a community, that's not your only, your, own, your only network. You can reach out for support groups, and there is a lot of support groups for new moms. And they get together, they help with tips, buying, selling, e Someone comes to your house to help you for, for rest bite. So big support you have is going back to your foundation when things get ugly and you realize that you are not the one protecting your baby. You're not the one taking care of the baby. You are the tool to do so.
but there is a God up there that is actually looking after that people. And that makes you feel like, I really, really don't have to worry. I can sleep because that baby is safe in the hands of the mighty. Or my husband is safe and my family is safe. Yeah. When it comes to support, please be specific and be direct and clarify to yourself what you need. And as Egyptians, we are not used to say, please come and do this and this and this for me. Whenever we ask you, do you need help? Oh, I'm really good. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I'm honestly asking you, how can I help you? So for you to be specific, you need to sit with your other half and say, what do we really need that we are not coping with? And if that means maybe I need more time to do my laundry, or maybe I need somebody to babysit my child so I can go for a walk. Maybe if I need somebody to help me out with cooking, how am I going to do that? So, the advice is you write a list of what you need, what is overwhelming you, what's taking so much time. Then you break it down into things that you have to do it yourself and things that can be delegated. And the ones that can be delegated, you can ask your friends specifically about them and we'll go through that in one of the next slides. We go back to avoid reaching the red line Look at the positives that you have during your day. Your baby is growing, your baby is peeing, your baby is cooing. There are no issues here. That you are feeling better today than in the week before. That your husband finally starts to learn how to do the dishes. Look at yourself and say, hey, we are winning in a way. So find what you are winning at and enjoy it and put it there. So... We go back to the say, to keep yourself on top of, the, top of things, you'll have to be looking after you, at your self-care, your nutrition, your sleep, your exercise. And nutrition, this is where I really need to stay quiet for a minute and ask, how many of us have ever asked a friend to buy food, prepare it, cook it, and bring it to them as I don't know how many do that, but this is something that they are advising. Ask for help with food. If you don't like what, how people cook things, at least ask them to do the shopping, prepare it, get it ready, and you just throw it on the stove or throw it in the oven. The food component, we see it as a golden opportunity for the guys to actually get brownie points from the girls because every guy can actually figure out how to make steak and side of Spanish or something. And doing so, it's not only going to feed your girl, feed your family, feed your baby. It's going to make your girl feel like, you know what? This guy really feels my pain. He's doing something good. So the food component, the nutrition component, as much as very important, I think it is a very golden opportunity for the guys to connect, for the friends to step in and to say, hey, I am here, I am going to prepare this for you, I'm going to deliver it to your house, then you have this in your fridge or in the freezer, and you don't have to worry about doing this. And when we come to the end, I'm going to ask to hear the tips from all the young moms and, and people around, how can you maintain good food supply into your house if you have no time? If what worked for you, what would work for others? So we share it and we use it. I have less than four minutes to go. So, we said food, sleep, self-care, relaxation. When we talk about exercise, we are talking about exercise within your limits, but going out, if you're a gym goer, going out for half an hour every couple of days will keep your mental health. And if that means you get your baby wrapped and really well dressed and you go to the gym, there is usually at the gym child care available, 
when COVID goes away, that would actually put your mind at far higher status because you feel, you know what, I'm in charge, I'm okay. If you're not able to do so and you are able to go for a nice walk, please do it. Who is your buddy who goes out like 6 p.m.? We know that we're going for a walk or 4 o'clock we are going for a walk. Look for a friend or look for if your partner is available, if your mother-in-law is available, if your best friend is available. Try to buddy with somebody. And for you who did not have a child, doing this to your friend who has a child, you're really supporting her big time. You will feel good, you will look good, and it will make you feel like you're not trapped. The, um, mindfulness is something that guys from psychology keep telling us you really have to connect to the moment and feel it. What I like here is that thinking about the regrets of the past or worries about the future takes away your opportunity to enjoy this moment. So this moment when I'm talking to you, I'm so grateful that I have friends who want to listen to me, that I'm here, that I read something, that I have a computer, that you are here. And if I can't enjoy that, trust me, I'll never enjoy tomorrow. So when we were young, we used to say food, exercise, and sleep. It is the same story, nutrition, exercise, and sleep. Then time for yourself, and support. And the support, we said religious support, spiritual support, family and friends, and groups. I'm not far away from saying bye-bye. So, you can make a difference today by considering picking up the phone or emailing or texting one of your friends who has a child or maybe has a husband or maybe has, you know what, some people are just like, we need the help because we are all, and just say, what can I do for you? Do you want me to do some shopping for you? Do you want me to prepare a couple of meals for you? Do you want me to come and do laundry for you while you are sleeping in your own bedroom? Do you want me to come and do some ironing for you? These are acts of positive support rather than just showing things and liking her on Facebook. Going to your friend's house to do her laundry. Going to your friend's house to do some cleaning, do the dishwasher, or preparing food, taking it there, means the world for her. Makes her feel like she's really appreciated, that she has a friend, that she's not on her own. Um, to offer your friend that you go and I'm going to do babysitting for your three children and you can go out with your husband for shopping trip or for a walk or to fight somewhere outside, not in front of the kids, or to do something that you really enjoy and just eat ice cream or buy burger from five guys. Just like to do something. He, I don't mean to be really unfair to the boys, but honestly, guys, guys, believe me, you can do the same. We just need to ask our girls what to do and listen to them. Then probably it will be good. Yeah. I'll stop here, then I'll open the questions, and I can't thank you enough for giving me the opportunity. No, we want to thank God for you, doctor. We want to thank you as well. Um, I have two comments before I open the floor for others to comment. Number one, uh, a request from Facebook uh, attendees. They want to have an Arabic translation for the lecture. I don't know how we're going to do that, but maybe we can do it another time, just summary and translation for this lecture. Many people actually attended and they were really, really uh, happy about it. The other request is sharing the slides. Uh, people ask to share the slide if you don't mind. I'm going, if Abuna allow me, I'm going to open the link, send it to Abuna, you send it Absolutely. to everyone. This slide is on Google Drive. So once I open that, you can share it, no question mark. Yes, so this is my first comment. The second comment is on the song you shared. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was going to fire you after that song until I find a verse in the Bible 
that speaks the sea. So let me share the verse. So we consider the song a spiritual song in that case. <laughs> that for that only message. So in Exodus 20:17 it says, "You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, not his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is." your neighbors so basically the bible tells us to keep our eyes on our own belonging and don't look at others and just con covet them or desire what they have <laughs> 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 okay well and then i command request for the mindfulness uh, presentation so we'll we'll make sure that all these resources are available uh amira would you like to say something I will just go through the names one by one. Hi, Abuna. Hi, Ahmed. If you have a Hi, question or comment, okay. yeah. Merci, Khalis, and then if you come in Elias and I'm going through the names one by one E Elias. طيب لو مش عارف تعمل أميوت إياد معلوف. Yes, Abuna. Yes, يا حبيبي. If you have a comment or question. Uh, no questions, but um, uh, it's a great talk. Like I think we've 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 benefited from all the support uh, that Doctor has said. Uh, religious community you know like it's it's very nice to have somebody around for sure absolutely happy support and not like a, um just ask for help if you need something ask for for help don't don't feel shy absolutely happy. the worst thing that can happen is feeling lonely feeling alone and facing that giant by yourself that's a very very valid comment and i think dr ala emphasized that support is not only friends, is not only family, is not even only the church, but there are community support as well. Let's not be shy in seeking those. Uh, Miret, I have two Mirets here, so Miret without last name. I think it's Miret Prince. This, this one is Miret Awadallah. <laughs> yes, Miret Awadallah. Yes, Habibi. Uh, I don't have any questions. Uh, good job, Baba. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I like that you are so smart. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that, that's a very good thing. Uh, Miret Athanasius. I know. Thank you so much. This was such a helpful and, and educational presentation. Absolutely, okay. Habib. Uh, Merna. Hello. Yeah, we, I have no questions. It was a really good presentation. Very informative. Thank you, guys. Yes. Do you appreciate? He's praising all the psychologists and all of that. He mentioned you by name, but absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Peter and Parthena. Oh, I'm sorry, Nardine, uh, No, I would... go ahead, you I'm sorry. We don't have any much to add. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for the talk. Thank you, Habib. Nardine Awadallah. Hi, um, I'm a little biased, but I did really like this talk. Um, I really appreciated um, when um, Baba mentions the uh, kind of like the breastfeeding shaming that happens sometimes and the Facebook comparisons. And I think it was just a nice uh, reminder of how much pressure there is on moms and there's so much going on in their bodies. And we just, uh, it's a nice reminder to give them support, even when it seems like they have it all together. So. Definitely, yeah. definitely. I think I think stigma becomes a huge thing nowadays. We live in a in a time where if you sneeze, you feel ashamed of yourself because people will assume that you have COVID, which is something that nobody should be ashamed of. Even having COVID is not a stigmatizing situation. But uh, nowadays, I think people like are easy to feel ashamed, and I think 
a woman after giving birth she will have that negative view of her of herself that's a huge point I really appreciated that point as well uh, in ST If you'd like to add a comment or ask a question, yes, I my word, Michelle. Type Dr. Michael if you if you wanna add a comment or question. Hey, Sabuna, uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Awadallah for the wonderful talk. Um, and if you uh, allow me, so I can share with just uh, a little comment and the experience in the field here in Canada. Yes, father, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Um uh, Actually, when I was in business, I faced lots of uh, lots of my patients during their pregnancy. Before they going for uh, for labor, they came with a prescription with uh, citalopram, ten milligrams once daily, or paroxetine, uh, which is, which is the medication used for the antidepression. Actually, yeah. Uh, but the majority of them actually after they took it and uh, maybe they, they they came back to the pharmacy and I was following with them for a council to uh, to ask how are you doing uh, how things going uh, do you need any help uh, uh, how is your neighbor is doing and blah 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 so they, they, they all of them or maybe 95 percent of them they came back, with the feeling that we are okay, maybe take this medication and 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 and, and decompose it. Mm. So they didn't use the medication at all. Yeah. So I believe it's a disease, but it's not at the same time. If we will get the uh, the, the good prescription, like uh, Doctor Awadallah mentioned, that to get busy and to feel happy with the baby and uh, all the other procedure. And we get somebody to look after, to help, like to, uh, are you going, I need some food or you want to, you want to buy something from, uh, from superstore, or from Costco, whatever it is. So this one, I believe will help the patient. Uh, and this also, the last comment, which yielded me to uh, the sixties and seventies, whenever I hear this disease, uh, the postpartum depression, because the people they get together and they are uh, they were really actually um, helping each other and they were share usually the good points not the not the negative points during the labor I mean yes so, uh, I, I I never hear that disease even when I was young uh, maybe in the in the in the in the teenagers I never heard about it yes. um, because like Dr Awadallah said that it's uh, it's really when you get busy, it's really very nice, and you can easily to overcome the disease. So thank you very much again, and uh, and uh, I hope that uh, would be a good benefit for everybody. Absolutely, Habib. One one comment on what you said, and I, I agree with you, but let me just put it in a different way, and also I'll let Doctor Ala if he would like to add something. Obviously, the majority. Of mental health and I'm saying the majority because not all of them but the majority of mental health uh, can be treated given the strength and the severity of the situation by talk therapy by so many things by ev even behavior activation by CBT by positive psychology which doesn't involve medication yet at certain point uh, we can actually look at medication when they are prescribed by the doctors obviously uh, as as you mentioned as a wonderful tool and a wonderful uh, treatment uh, part of the treatment plan but while people are also on medication prescribed by their doctors they can continue on the talk therapy and the self-actualization self-care surround themselves with so many different activities or maybe resting a bit maybe so what we call uh, the self-care activity in this case. So what I want to say is most of the mental health issues, if they are at a low level, low intensity, they can definitely be treated by just talk therapy, by psychotherapy. But at certain point, they, they need, obviously, as you said, 
to be prescribed medication and when they are on those medication talk therapy can also support and help as Christian we integrate the the medication the talk therapy the spiritual therapy as well uh, because we look at a full human not just one aspect of humanity but I, I agree with you 100% and I just wanted to rephrase what you said uh, thank you Samuel. I think you, that's you, what you, you wanted you, to say you, right? you are you, you are the professional no ya habibi no I'm trying I'm trying to give some of the feedback from the from the uh, from the uh, from the real from life my, <laughs> from my business back back business I mean yes thank Do you Samuel. Dr Ala if you have something you want to add to I, this point I, I, I really love what uh, Mike has said that 60s and 70s we were at less risk of knowing show in postpartum depression but it was existing in society and we still had people who killed themselves postpartum and we didn't know what was wrong with them so it was existing we did not diagnose them enough but the support system that Mike is describing was absolute pillar that women can hold on to and they sail through the difficult time. This support system is lacking when you are living in a small condo, you don't have the extended family, you don't have seven cousins coming to clean your house. So that is not existing. The other thing that's happening now, just to add to the comment to Mike and support that, that one out of three of our kids have an anxiety or depression. And if one out of three have an anxiety or depression, and probably one out of three are on medications, then this group should be super supported that they don't get to feel that they failed, or they don't have enough connection to God. No, you have all the connection, you are using all resources, you need to use the gifts given to you by God, and part of it is your medication. Like, God gave you the resources to use. And sometimes these resources means you take a pill, you take a, you take your psychotherapy session, you go and do what you are you are given the gifts that God gave you to use, and one of them is medications. People who need medications need to be monitored closely, and I'm glad that it shows how Mike was connected to his clients because the people on antidepressants and anxiety medications, if we change dosing or change the medication, they can be at risk of suicide. So it's great that he was connecting with them. And I hope that providers are connecting with the patients when they give prescriptions, because prescription without follow-up is recipe for potential problems. I just want to clarify, yes, all the support will get us to be at reduced risk, but we will not be at no risk. And I just repeat that one out three of the youth have depression and anxiety, and that is not a shameful thing. You should, they should be very, very proud of themselves that, hey, I know I have this, I'm working on it, I'm doing my self-care, I'm doing my psychotherapy, I'm getting, and they stay on top of it to be functioning. That's what all of them want Thank you, Habib. Uh, any any other comment? I think we have couple who couldn't uh, unmute themselves. If you can right now, it's the time to share your comment. Uh, Hala, would you like to say something? Uh, thank you, Abuna, for uh, for this opportunity. Um, as Amira said, uh, I would love to help anyone who needs help from you know the. And the new moms or uh, you know any anyone need some help uh, I have or some some time in my hand because I don't have yeah. the tokens anymore and um, it is you know it, it, it it's um, it's overwhelming when you have a baby even you know after you know like everything after the first one and second one and even the third one still with all the changes and the the, uh, the taxing on the body to have a baby and uh, taxing psychologically as well and the sleep deprivation is a huge thing and most of the people I don't know if there is uh, some people lucky with babies who sleep 
through the night. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, I, I would love to be able to help anyone. That's very good. Tassoni, your turn. Do you have something to say? Thank you very much, Dr. Awadallah. It was amazing. Um, really, every time you, you talk, we have something new to learn about. Um, and yeah, I'm with Hala and Amira. If someone needs help, please ask for help and we are willing to help. Like, any I have last request. Mm -hmm. Last, last request. I'm yes, Father Habib. May the young generation please try it. Write a list of what you want mm -hmm. and pick up the phone and talk to one of your friends and say, hey, maybe I want you to do this shopping or I want you to prepare this Molochia Bifrech with Fatiha or Amr. I am serious. I'm honestly serious. Honestly. Number one, you as a friend, when you ask for help, you are making your friend feel how valuable your friendship is. So you are helping. It will not really bring her back, but it will make her feel valued. And it will make her feel that she can rely on you in her bad day. So please write a list, go through it, Try it, and you'll be very impressed with how this will in, empower the relationship. So, in so addition, I yeah, go ahead. Uh, um, can you a few kind of uh, like official uh, service group? Like, for example, Amira, I will talk to her to say that we will do support to kind of help. Can you a few an official service? Uh, يعني سيرفيس معينة for uh, new moms uh, عشان ما يحسوش إنها دي حاجة personal دي 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 كده يعني ممكن تبقى سيرفيس نعرف مين النيو مام and we can offer them um, shopping cooking cleaning yeah, house just a, a child uh, even to go and uh, you know babysitting and uh, doing shopping clean whatever they need uh, but to be like a, Kind of as a special, uh, certain service, not done in, in a personal level, because personal level is going to be really hard for anyone to ask for help, and it's not easy <laughs> for anybody to ask for help anyway. But if it is something uh, offered for everyone, but then yeah, and then lots of people they uh, they move to Canada, new immigrants, and they have babies uh, before even they build their social network, and they need you need some. Some support, even someone to call them and say, "How are you doing? How is the baby? Do you need just to say do you need anything, even if you don't do anything?" Hello, uh, how feel like what's up? Absolutely, I know. I know. We, we have talked. We have talked about moms. this. Maybe like I think for for more than a year now, you had that that uh, calling in your heart. You wanted to do something like that and. Yes, we are. We are actually in the process of doing something like that. Let's let's put that in an organized way, and that's a very interesting and very noble thing to do. When we are surrounded by support, especially for those, as you said, newcomers, those who don't have close family, uh, even if we have close family, but we can also help and support. I think. There is a call, a talk we're gonna do in the family meeting uh, about women's psychology in particular, and I think understanding what women go through uh, is so essential because happy wife, happy life, as Americans say. But we'll, we'll definitely do that. I haven't forgotten about that. It just COVID came and destroyed all the planning. Like. Uh, there is, there is a lovely verse from Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 41. It says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Maybe that's a promise from God we hear today. Do not be afraid. Do not fear. I am with you. God likes to comfort us if we are talking about motherhood today. Even Isaiah 66 would say, as a mother comforts her child, 
so will I comfort you and you will be comforted over Jerusalem it's a promise from God that he treats us like mothers which means love care compassion and all these lovely things maybe God on a personal level does that and through his servants as you mentioned Hala, Amira and Tasuni yes you will be God's hand and tools who can comfort others and support others during their trouble. Uh, if, if we have last call for any comment or question, I know there is Diana, uh, Dina. Mm -hmm. Dina uh, just joined. He, she was listening with us earlier, but she didn't have a chance to say comment or question. Dina, if you want to say something, you can say it now if you, if you don't have anything to say. We want to thank you for joining us. Okay. Any question, any comment, any announcement, anything? Uh, just uh, a small question, uh, Ala. It's easy, it's easy to, if they ask for Molokhiya, that's okay. Well, what, what's going to happen if they ask for Mahshwara in a... This is the time when we come and beg your house to show us how to do it. This is when we come and beg you to teach us, man. No, you are most welcome. You are most welcome. Anybody is most welcome. And I'm just trying to think about it. I'm trying to think about it, Dr. Omar Al-Sawud. He's talking about the post-partner, not the time of the time. <laughs> Big difference, it's a warning, but we have to fulfill all requests. Okay, yes. thank you, thank the you. The session is Thanks recorded and it is actually posted on Facebook as we agree. Okay. Let us pray and conclude in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit from God. Amen. Our Lord Christ, we thank you so much for allowing us to meet your lovely sons and daughters, even if that meeting is virtual, to provide what we know uh, in your hand so that you can bless whatever we, we provide, O Lord, as you bless the five poles and the two fish, uh, in a way to satisfy your wonderful sons and do daughters everywhere. Mental health is a huge problem. Postpartum is even more dangerous problem. Yet our peace comes from you, O Lord, and our comfort comes from you. So we ask you to provide us and bless all the resources whether these resources are your comforting words, your lovely discussion with others, support from group, medication even, and therapy. Uh, but all of them, if they come from your hand, they will be uh, powerful and they will be uh, healing to it. Bless everybody, bless the service, bless this group, and make us worthy to pray thank you, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Now, the love of God the Father, the grace of His only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. Rabbina Ma'akum, see you next week for our grad meeting and next month for our uh, pre 